Hey guys, this one's going to be about taxes, specifically about different investment account types and which ones incur short-term capital gains taxes versus long-term capital gains taxes. I find too often that people in the investment world do not pay attention to their tax obligation when they first get started. And it's very crucial that you understand this stuff uh, if you're getting into options or just you know buying and selling and trading in and out of things. If you're not in an IRA account, like by IRA account, a Roth IRA, um, a rollover IRA that you transfer from a 401k, a SEP IRA, like an employment one, any of these IRA account types, if you're not if you're not in those and you're in just a traditional investment account, like you would get it like a Coinbase or a Robinhood or something like that, that isn't a retirement account, if you're using these standard investment accounts, you're subject to capital gains tax. If you if you don't hold something for at least a year, that is short-term capital gains. And the tax brackets and structure for that are much higher than long-term. You can be paying almost double the tax, depending upon how much you're cashing out. So if it's, if it's very small amounts, it's not as big of a deal. But if it's larger amounts, it can be. So I try and make sure that people understand, and that's one of the reasons I'm doing this video, when I trade... When I rebalance things, when I talk about buying and selling, I am doing that in IRA accounts. I'm doing that with a, some, a couple of Roths that I was eligible before because of income requirements. I was eligible in the past before retirement. And I do that with some traditional um, IRAs that had been rolled over from 401ks. So when I'm trading, that's what I'm doing it with. Outside of that, I have long-term accounts like my Coinbase account my Robinhood account, um, some money in SoFi, and some in Ally that are just traditional investment accounts. But what I'm doing there is I'm buying and holding for at least a year because I don't want to pay the tax brackets that we're seeing here on the right-hand side of the screen. And so we'll show you the difference here. It's pretty dramatic. So let's say you made a million dollars and you were married and filing jointly. You would have a tax obligation because, because of the way that they do this, they stair-step it up. So if you only made 23000 married filing jointly, you're in a 10% tax bracket for short term. That sucks. That even if you don't make that much money, they're still getting you. Now, there's still the standard deduction that you can subtract against this. So really, it's like you'd only be 10% or 5% on your first, like I'd, let's say, $45,000 because the standard deduction and how much this is. But that still sucks. Like Again, a lot of the times, people in those brackets, that's so low that they don't even pay that much in tax especially with long-term capital gains. And let's say you made a million dollars. If you made a million dollars between all these different brackets, you'd probably be averaging about 34% for tax. And so you'd, you'd end up, in, and that's if you didn't trade in and out a bunch of times and make a bunch of money and then just do that a whole bunch of times. Because when you do that, it actually makes it to where the taxable dollar amount could be bigger than a million dollars. Like maybe... Maybe you don't have much left because you lost some of it or you traded it away with fees, but you could have a tax bill where that was built off of $1.4 million when in actuality all you had left at the end was about a million, but you have that $1.4 million tax obligation, and so you owe a lot more than you think you're going to owe. So again, my mor the moral of the story for me is don't trade unless you're doing it in tax-advantaged IRAs. Other than that, buy and hold for a year so that you, instead of having to pay a crazy tax bill where you're paying like at least, you know, $370,000 or, or I, I should say $330,000 for, for a million bucks in returns. And instead, you could be doing this where the first 94000 is 0% with long-term capital gains. So if you had a bunch of, and gains is what, what it says, right? There's the concept of if you make money, then that's a gain. Losses, short-term or long-term capital losses, count against those gains. So if for some reason you had a bunch of losses and you sold out of those too, that would actually lower your tax bill, which is great. But again, in the IRA world, you don't even think about this. Taxes come at the end. Um, they, they, you don't have to worry at all about your tax bill until you actually cash it out. Um, it's not the trading that's that's got a tax bill. But with those traditional accounts, Again, in this first example here, married and filing jointly, if you include the standard deduction, which is like 25, 26, I don't know what it is for 2024, 
it's a hundred you can make a hundred and twenty thousand dollars and if you had you and your spouse had no other income like my wife and i since we're both retired your tax bill would be zero percent wrap your head around that so if you're just wealthy and invested and you've and you're just not even making any income you could make a hundred and twenty thousand dollars and not even have a tax bill at the end of the year but let's look here so then 94 to 583 that's a huge number is only 15 percent so again like you got that standard deduction in there so the first 120 you didn't pay anything in taxes and then the next um 560 ish you you have to pay that 15 percent so really your tax bill is probably like 13 percent for withdraw for making five hundred and eighty three thousand dollars in a long-term account you, you're only paying like 13% in taxes. How crazy is that? And then if you made a million, if you made a million, again, everything under 583 was only 15%. So really you're paying about maybe 16 and a half, 17% in taxes for a million dollars. So that other example up here, we're looking at a tax bill that could be like 330,000. Or if you traded just too many times and your tax obligation got higher, maybe it's like 400,000 in a tax bill Whereas down here for a million dollars, our example is 170,000. So you have 230,000 more dollars left over for yourself, not the IRS man. So my whole my whole point here is just to get people to understand, make sure you're trading in the right accounts and investing for at least a year in your traditional accounts so that you have a small tax bill. And again, I'm not a I'm not a financial advisor or a tax advisor. This is from my experience and some websites that I have pulled up right now. Look this stuff up on your own and make sure that you understand it. But I would highly recommend that you think about your tax bills before you get too far in investing and then find out down the road that you thought you did really well only to find out that the IRS man is knocking on your door. Because you got to remember, um, the Biden administration has pushed for a lot more tax people coming in. And there's there's some stuff going back and forth that might reduce that again where it's not crazy, but but they're looking at 88,000 or something tax people, extra tax people to go after people. And they'll start with the richest people and they'll work their way down. So remember that and uh, and and make sure that you're you're doing your due diligence and make sure that there's, a, there's an old saying, it's kind of a joke and a little bit sexist, but it's three ways to get poor. I think this is from like Warren Buffett or one of these guys. Three ways to get poor. Um, women, margin, definitely don't do margin, and not paying your taxes. So again, stay away from margin, pay your taxes, and uh, well, I mean, you can't you can't pass up women. This is not going to work out, right? So anyway, love you guys. I uh, hope you got something from this. Uh, have a great day. If, you, if there is more that you want to go into, I kept this pretty basic, but if there's more that you have questions about in regard you know, to tax obligations, um, let me know and we can go further in depth into it in a follow-up video. Otherwise, have a great day. Bye.